guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is basically the user interface of M Creator. We haven't done this kind of video for a very long time. So there's a lot of different parts that are part of the new UUI and things that have been added over the years. So I thought I would cover that in a kind of a develop development tutorial so you guys can kind of see and get used to the application a little bit better. This will be more targeted for people that are new to the M Creator application, but you might learn a couple things from it from if you've already used M Creator. So definitely tune in. So right here we have the actual launcher for the M Creator application, and you can create a new workspace through here. There is your created workspaces on this side. This uh, will actually update depending on um, what kind of mods that you have. There's a little key note that I'll explain in a little bit. But then you have uh, open workspace. This is uh, very similar to uh, just selecting a folder. You would select your folder or mcreator.mcreator .mcreator file. So uh, anything with an mcreator file uh, extension, you would be able to open that. So that's basically that. And then you can import from files. So this is uh, probably the easiest way to back up your workspaces. You can import them through this method. I'll cover that in a little bit with the um, application. And then you can basically clone remote. So this is basically when you want to uh, clone a remote workspace. Um, that I already did a tutorial on how to use the desktop application, but it does have um, an option to actually clone a remote workspace from a GitHub uh, area. So you can use that if you want to. So let's just click on one of the things. But before we do that, we can actually go to where I have all my things stored. And there is one final note that I should probably note with this thing is if go to programs, I have all my mods stored under here. So uh, let's just open up this one. Uh, so we have M Creator on this side and the other one, you will see that there's an M Creator file, uh, it's .m Creator. You can actually just drag that directly over to the app, the launcher, and it will add it to the actual th uh, list there. Now it will say that this one obviously says that the generator is on an older version. It's, um, it'll probably prompt me to open up a different version. I can either choose between 1.16, an older version, which I didn't have at the time because it was 1.17, or I could use 1.18 with more support. I'd probably want to go with 1.18. I would click OK, and then it would basically do the generation process for that particular thing so there's there's that and um if you have a whole bunch of lists in the um thing then what you can do is you can basically just click on that same m creator file and it will basically just limit it to one in that particular list so with that being said i'll just leave that to compile and then i'll cut back in when we have um access to m creator again so then we have our navigation so you can find a bunch of different things up here you can find um, general links and stuff for the M Creator community website their social media sites uh, where to donate if you want to donate to them uh, publish your modification you can actually do that quickly uh, under file there is a whole bunch of other options here you can export to shareable zip this is what I usually use for uh, that zip icon that I can import zip from and uh, there is import from shareable zip that would basically act as the same thing and you also have the export shareable zip with run directory so I don't really use that one too much but you can run use the shareable zip and it seems to work just fine. That's what I use for all of the uh, example workspaces and stuff too. So people can just import it through that way and it would work. Uh, clone this workspace. So this would basically work uh, similar to making a copy of it. So there's also preferences. So you can set your preferences for uh, your M Creator settings and stuff like that. There's a whole bunch of different settings that you can go over like UI themes and stuff that you can actually 
play around with on your own time. There's tons of different stuff. You can add custom command templates. You can add custom uh, AI builder templates, uh, procedure templates that you create, uh, textures, um, templates that you've made, armor texture templates. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can actually add as well as UI backgrounds. One of those are basically change the background of the uh, application which is pretty cool. Um, you can ask, also exit out of mCrater. Workspace has um, a few different tools. Uh, you can basically uh, set up the external, like the uh, order of your creative tab. This is also accessible on the toolbar right at the top here. There's an icon right there. And what this will do is it'll allow you to shift around things under certain creative tabs or your custom creative tabs and um, align them however you want. You can save the layout and stuff as well. Uh, there is um, add common tags is kind of like a quick generator for tags for Minecraft. You can quickly add things that Minecraft uses for certain things like fences and stuff. So these have certain properties that might be um, important for the um, game to actually register for certain things like leaves might have a certain um, place with that. I think there's arrows and a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, leaves is one of them. You'd need to add that to leaves when you're making custom leaves. So there's those and uh, open workspace folder. This is actually really handy. It brings you directly to the workspace folder and you can go directly to your run folder which is basically where your saves and stuff are located when you're running the test environment so you can actually get to all your logs and stuff like that so if you have crash reports they'll show up in crash reports and stuff like that so it's really handy for getting the information you need for your troubleshooting and bug reporting as well uh, source is basically where all your assets are located things like your uh, textures and models and stuff like that those are all located under your actual thing so that's basically the run folder, the uh, app workspace folder uh, workspace settings this is um, basically relevant to your mod so you can set up uh, the author all the information about your mod uh, the copyrights all this other stuff that you want to set up uh, external APIs this is basically if you uh, want to add support for an API or use an API for actually um, other mods to use. Uh, sometimes you might want to link to other mods if they're required. And um, for example, if one mod's using certain blocks and stuff from another mod, then they might want to make that a, a required mod or something like that. And then you have additional settings. This is a uh, little bit more advanced but uh, you can use uh, github on a public workspace to basically keep track of your updates it will give a little icon when it's um, there's an update or whatever so you can use that uh, raw url to put in here and it will basically tell people that the mod is updated actually there's a couple more things under workspace you can also uh, ex export to the uh, default used mod or whatever basically what this mod or export type does is it will allow you to use it in your mods folder for other mods so if you go to your mods folder uh, you can place it in here uh, this is uh, specifically though for development versions there's a difference between a regular export and this kind of export uh, mainly because this one is decompiled where the other one is compiled so um, mods running a compiled version will be more designed for clients where the one for the uh, this option up here is basically for testing and development so if you want to allow other mods to basically uh, try running your mod and have support for cross mods compatibility then you would have to export for that one as well as the client version and list which one it's for um, otherwise if you're trying to run a regular exported one in the mods folder the game will just simply crash so um, that's just the development cycle stuff 
Moving on to resources, we have a whole bunch of import asset type things. So you can import uh, textures, blocks, and stuff like that. Uh, you can import painting, uh, logo, and etc. So those are the textures that you can import there. Uh, you can import sounds, import um, structures, import from Minecraft for structures. And then you also have uh, import different model types. Uh, you have your Java 3D, which is for entities and projectiles. You have JSON for items and blocks. And then you also have um, OBG J, uh, files, which are a little bit different. Um, I think they're more dynamic. I haven't ever really experienced with them, so like played around with them, so I don't know exactly what they are, but uh, there's been some recent reports of some issues, so I'm not sure if there's anything that, about that, but it'll probably be fixed in a while. But uh, Build and run. So you can build your workspace. That would be the equivalent of just pressing the hammer up here, and it's just going to test to see if the thing can compile and stuff like that and then we have um build project only great build gradle project only i'm not sure i don't really use that one too often clean build files so this sometimes can help with errors and stuff um generally i don't use it uh just because it has to do with caches and stuff but uh, if you click on it then it might clean up the uh, workspace a little bit so there's always that it might help with things regenerate and uh, regenerate code and build so basically what this is it's equivalent if you press this little orange icon right over here uh, what this will do is it will just kind of make sure that every element is properly set up and um, if there's any errors or whatever this can generally fix um, certain things it'll take a couple seconds to do but it'll generate regenerate all the elements and then basically set it up that way and then we have um, reload gradle project which is basically going to do that startup uh, process when you're actually importing your gradle project this can sometimes help with bugs uh, clean gradle caches so again this is kind of last resort that you would basically want to do but um, if there's certain errors that might not be working then you might be able to uh, clear the caches if that fails and you'll have to like navigate through the, the logs and stuff like that to figure out what's going on uh, cancel gradle tasks so this will just cancel everything that's equivalent of pressing the stop icon over on the bar over there run gradle task that's more advanced i would not recommend using that if you're new to m creator or gradle and then you have your run and run server cl and client so there's these two options as well uh tools you have a whole bunch of uh quick icon packs these are a little bit pretty useful for creating massive things like tool packs and stuff like that i don't recommend using it just solely for that purpose um generally m creator doesn't accept tool packs and stuff onto their website but they do provide the option to make it a little bit easier and quicker to make uh, a, a tool set or an or set or something like that in your actual mod so it does allow you to speed the process rather than importing every element at a time so those are basically the options there and then you can create um, armor texture creates animated texture the animated texture editor allows you to import through strips which are basically a long list of uh, different um, frames in one long line which is basically imported through there or you can add individual frames as well um under the other options we have um open java uh edition in install i'm not too familiar with these other ones here actually so I think this might be the installation for the Java edition or something. I'm not sure. And then you have um, Minecraft data, data lists, which are basically quick links to wiki pages for different things uh, for the application. So like sound lists and stuff like that. So there's those. 
Uh, remote workspace, uh, this is a, again a little bit more advanced. Um, basically you can set up your re remote workspace through here. Um, generally I suggest using the remote desk or the desktop app for GitHub and that is a little bit more stable than the remote workspace but if you want to give this a try then you use it at your own risk. Um, it's not fully developed it has issues it can sometimes corrupt your workspace so there's always that to keep in mind and then you have windows so you can close windows and stuff like that and all your window options and then you have some help options as well uh, over on the workspace tab uh, then we have a few other options down here we can create an element by the plus icon there's a whole bunch of elements that are supported uh, we can edit a icon, edit a file. So if we go into here, we can actually duplicate, give it a name, we can duplicate an element. We can also edit the element. That would be equivalent to right clicking on it and going open and edit. Uh, there is uh, delete. There is also uh, the edit files for the, the different uh, components for it. So you'll be able to view and edit those if you want to. You can also lock and uh, set the ID for the element as well, but uh, this is probably not recommended to do. Just let it do its own thing. Under resources, we have a few different tabs that we can use. We can import textures. There's different texture tabs. So if we want to create a texture, all the settings from the other bars up here we have uh, access to. Uh, there is import textures, so we can import all the different ones. Edit selected, so if we select something, we can edit it with the editor that's built into mCreator. And then we also have uh, our 3D models, so we can import our JSON, Java, and other um, OBJ files as well. Sound files can be imported on the sound file one. Structures over here, you have the two options for import to Mine from Minecraft and from the structure. And then you have screenshots, so anything that you take a screenshot in the game will show up onto this list. Uh, variables are global variables that are either specific to the player or to the world itself. Uh, you can run it from session, um, a whole bunch of other things from the map, session, world, lifetime for the player, or persistent. Uh, lifetime and persistent, persistent are a lot different. Lifetime is only going to be as the entity is alive where the persistent will happen even if they die. So there's those two options. Session is basically only going to run, uh, it'll basically boot each time that the session is changed, where if you were to use map or world, uh, those will be specifically to the either the world or the map, uh, depending, and there's a whole bunch of different uh, types of variables that you can add, block state, direction, item stack, logic, number, string, and you can give it a name how you want it. So there's those, and uh, there's help with variables as well as removing. Removing variables might mess up script though, so make sure that you unlink things from it before doing it, doing so. Localization is basically things for translation. Uh, you can actually add localization and um, keys. This sometimes helps with um, things like key binds and certain death messages that you might want to add for um, certain actual keys, so the localization entries. So basically, if we were to go blah, can't even spell today, <laughs> blah, uh, it will basically create a entry up here or wherever in the list, and then you can basically give it a translation. So there's that. You can also remove entries, and then you can export to CSV, which is a certain format for translation that can be imported into like Excel or something like that for uh, translation. Um, you can also have someone come into your mod and translate it. You can also press the, the icon, the plus icon right down next to the uh, EN US and select different languages for translation. This will auto translate it, but it will provide the a new tab for someone to translate it. So. For example, if I wanted to add Canadian French, I would basically select Canadian French, and then I would import from English, and then they would be able to translate this from the English version. So basically you can see that it's just made a clone of that particular one, and they can translate it from that, but that's basically that part. 
All right, so that's the translation part, and then you have the remote desktop option down here, and I think that's about it. Uh, there is the filter option, so you can filter elements uh, by um, build errors. Those are really handy for finding elements with build errors. Uh, locked elements, so you can find a locked element, show all, and uh, you can also go ahead and sort through the different type of element types. Uh, there's also, um, different orders of how you can basically display it by name, creation date, type, um, loading order. Uh, there's also ascending and descending. Uh, you can also add folders. So if you were wanting to add a folder, you can click on the folder icon over here. And then it will basically give you an option to name something. So we could just go blah. And it'll create a new folder where you can put things under for uh, whatever you need so you can be anything that you want uh, just not the same name or it'll merge into the same folder so outside of that that's all that i think that you guys really need to know about uh, it's just a quick tutorial on the actual user interface uh, hopefully that clears up a lot of things hopefully you guys have learned a few different new things with the application so happy modding and i will see you guys next time Thanks for watching. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.